Hi guys, my name is Ian Crew. I'm an instructor at the Joy of Dance Center in Toronto, Ontario, and today I'm here with Ole Burley, who's uh, also an another instructor at the same studio. And uh, Ole, you've been teaching for a while, yes? Yeah, I would say um, 22 years. That's that's pretty respectable. Long time. Yeah. Nice, nice. What was I doing 22 years ago? Yeah. I think I was just I was just starting to go to like Latin clubs and enjoy myself Don't there. Don't do the math. Yeah. <laughs> don't date him, don't date him, unless you want to, in which case, no, he's unavailable. Uh, so why don't we start off with uh, an easy question, Ole. So why, in your opinion, is good posture important in ballroom dancing? I would say that um, the posture is important for everyday life. Mm -hmm. And I think that many students of ours do come to learn how to dance to be able to improve on the posture. Mm -hmm. So that's why um, we have the students and that's why we're trying to do the first thing in the very first few lessons is to put people together in the comfortable position right. to be able to do the things that we teach. Right. So, so they need to have that posture before a lot of the right. movements of arm dancing right. become possible. Because it's different because the gravity is center of the uh, of two partners because the ballroom is a couple dancing. Mm -hmm. So when those centers are related properly, it can go round, yeah. connected, it can go linear, sideways. So we do need that posture to be able to do the moves that we teach. Mm -hmm. That's the importance of the posture. So if you have a complete beginner coming into your classes, what are some of the first things that you would tell them about having correct ballroom posture? Well, we first of all need to align the head, the shoulders, hips, and right, foot. Right, right. Just making sure the kind of blocks of weight are centered over each other. So there's not such a thing as a good and a bad posture. There is so much in between. Mm -hmm. And I think we should start from the point where the student's posture does not overwhelm learning the steps. So um, it has to be introduced. Yes. It doesn't mean that the students will be able to practically do it at the time of the lesson. Mm -hmm. But you plant it and you reinforce it over the period of time. Mm -hmm. And as I said, the, many people can relate to uh, parts of the body that would kind of align, like a pyramid, one yeah, on top yeah. of the other. And when we move, that pyramid sometimes gets crooked. <laughs> so one part falls off the other part, and this is when it's impossible to dance. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So even telling that much, introduction of the alignment of the body parts is, is a great way to start to introduce the posture. Right. So we talk about like how ballroom uh, dancing posture is similar to uh, our posture in our everyday lives, but are there ways in which it's actually different from our posture just walking around? Yeah, it's more extensive in dancing. Mm -hmm. You could be a great dancer, put your posture up and perform the moves and dance, and then right after you can slouch and lose it and mm -hmm. be just a regular Joe, nobody would even know you were dancing. Mm. So when we're talking about correct posture though, like just correct everyday posture versus correct ballroom posture, like would you say that there is a difference between there the two? There is a difference. Okay. Yeah. Well, the correct anatomically, I um, have some medical um, education in mm -hmm. that. The correct posture is the one that carries your joints and muscles in the positions that it does not cause the aches mm -hmm. and have a certain presentation to it because being a little bit straighter than uh, the other guy next to you is already a big achievement because uh -huh. you notice that there are the bags that we carry and there are ways that we walk, there are ways that we sit, there are ways we eat Mm -hmm. and it's manners and it's uh, all the socially acceptable and unacceptable things that we do. So the posture over there is much less requirement than it is when you start dancing. Right. So hopefully when we dance and we teach them the posture, they can carry it on into the life mm -hmm. and that should be enough. So they can be more consistent with sort of maintaining good posture because right. there's related health benefits there as well. That's why they call us the stiffs. <laughs> so is that what it is? Well, I think so. It's the way we look to others. <laughs> so is there any movements or positions in ballroom dancing that can actually hurt our posture in our everyday lives? Well, there's a, a lead and a follow posture which are different. Right. And there are two different styles. Mm -hmm. American smooth and rhythm, international mm -hmm. standard and yeah. Latin. So there are some in international standard that mm -hmm. would 
herd follows in the long run if they do many hours a week and if they do it professionally mm -hmm. because of misalignment of the neck and, and the side of the body. They are reclining over to the They're left. Always keeping that chest they... open and that corkscrew yes, shape off. Yeah, so that's something that you would not need or do as a, a person that walks in the street. Mm -hmm. But it will introduce the muscle tone that will actually, the corset, the muscle corset that will actually help you to, uh, mm. to keep the good posture in everyday uh, life. But I would think that um, it's, it's the only one that actually might give you uh, some problem. There is a Latin, international Latin, that has very balletic um, upright with the intensity in the low back. Right. And uh, if we don't move the hips in the right place, in mm -hmm. the right direction, that can give you low back ache as well. But again, if not done correctly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right? I'm occasionally guilty that's of the, this as well. <laughs> that's the two of those things I can think of. Okay, okay. So, uh, and that, what you were saying before about the muscle tone, that leads into my next question, which is, um, what are some things that students can do to make that less of an issue? I guess specifically for the followers, for example, when they're having to deal with that upper back ache. Well, we would have a tendency to return to our normal human being posture anyway. Sure. So, I guess if you do some Pilates or yoga to allow to muscles to relax, get your normal position, that should be enough. Even the relaxation uh, twice a week, I think, would get you back to normal. If you keep doing the same for hours, we're talking about six hours a day yeah. of that reclining, that might affect, it's not a fact, right. might. So I wouldn't worry about any of the students that come and take the classes about being full reclining because they don't even require to recline as much as the professional dancers. Right. So, so when we're talking like high level dancers yes, or professional or competitive right. dancers, yes. that's where these issues tend to become more of a problem in ballroom it dancing. It wouldn't be a problem for social dancers that pick up. Even dancing every day for an hour would not cause the problem. Right, right. And when you yeah. talk about like two hours of relaxation, are you talking about like meditation or... Meditation, Pilates, yoga right. or um, some uh, Latin um, fitness dances like Kizumba and there are so many nowadays offered that would allow it to bring the body into that, you know, mm -hmm. move the body so it gets back to the normal alignment because if the muscles are contracting and they're contracting for extended period of time, mm -hmm. then you might have an issue uh, having to deal with that after. So anything, even a hot bathtub would do the trick mm -hmm. at the end of the day if you overdone that. Yeah, yeah, it's sort of like a lower impact or option. Or infrared sauna does miracles to that as well. What's that, sorry? Far infrared sauna. It's um, it's a sauna that doesn't really heat much, but mm -hmm. it penetrates you with the rays. Okay. Uh, short rays, and it goes right into the deep tissue muscles. Infrared muscle. sonar. Yeah, in far infrared. That's interesting, I've never heard of that before. Yeah. It's, as I dance, I recommend. It works for me. Okay. After long competition. Fair enough. So. Europeans been using it for centuries. Maybe not far infrared, but mm -hmm. sauna per se. Uh -huh. And nowadays, new technology allows that to. Um, it's anti-inflammatory. It's relaxing, and mm -hmm. it goes only to the places when you need to go. The heat. Right. Right. That's exciting. Okay. Uh, I just had actually one more question. Um, is there anything that we can do to uh, improve our posture when we're not dancing? This is where. Um, it's hard to give advice, it's not black and white. Mm -hmm. You don't necessarily need to stiffen up to maintain what's being taught. It has to come naturally in within your body. If you relax into good posture. How so? Is Let's say there is something, some exercises and moves that we teach in the class, and the students leaving the class will try to maintain the body in that position. That wouldn't work. Mm -hmm. There is life. We do things. We eat. We play football. We ride subway. Right, yeah. Maintain, constant maintenance of that could give you certain stress and pressure. Mm -hmm. So, first of all, it's a time consuming. Developing a good, fra good frame is not a matter of weeks or months. Yeah, bad news. <laughs> you got to dance for a year or two to see a first result. Nobody gets this overnight. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And if you do want to have that fast, that might hurt as well. Mm. It stresses you out. The moment you stress, your muscle tone is getting 
stiffen up and contracts the muscle. So that's not the way the good posture should work. It should develop in within the skeletal muscles, not the big ones, the mm -hmm. one that go close to the your, your the stabilizer actual, muscles. Yeah, stabilizer muscles, which are smaller, shorter, right. not big muscles that maintain even having the arm on the side for an mm -hmm. extended period of time can be very painful for many people. Absolutely. It starts shaking and, and for us being a dancer, we can stay for hours in that position because mm -hmm. we build a certain muscles. Yes. And we don't look muscular, but there are those muscles that hold that posture. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. what we're trying to build over extended. We're not getting bigger, time. we're getting denser. Yes. <laughs> it's what's under the skin, <laughs> under the muscle. That's right, that's right. It's our secret. All right, guys. Well, I hope you found that helpful. Uh, you can get a hold of Ole by contacting the Joy of Dance Center, um, or you can just Google his name. It's uh, O L E B U R L A Y. Did I get that right? You got that right. It's been a pleasure having you, sir. So thank you very much. And you have fun dancing, guys. Yes. Dancing with is good posture. Life with a good posture. <laughs>